Who let the demons out? Who? 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 Just kidding. Welcome home slices, home fries, and homes of other varieties. In today's video, <laughs> just kidding. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some commentary on a video called Michael and the Psychic. It was fine until a demon touched me. You know, it's all fun and games until a demon touches you. It ain't a fun time. This might be done in multiple videos. I don't know how many, just because of the notes I took. I took a lot. Probably 10 pages of notes just on this video. So here we go. A group of girls got together and they had the Ouija board. And the Ouija board is still out there today. You know, you ask it questions, which of course what you're doing is you're invoking demons when you're doing this, right? So is it true if you use a Ouija board, are you automatically invoking demons? Not necessarily, not all the time. But what I will say is, for the average person who is not super duper experienced and a professional in the Ouija board, because let's be real, there are some people who claim to not have any problems, but they're experts. But for the average person, I would say 99% of the time, you're gonna have a problem. While it might not always be a demon, you're gonna get something that's going to affect you in some negative way. Whether you get a haunting attachment, something that leeches your energy, something that causes bad luck, like you're gonna have some problems. And this isn't to be a fear mongerer, right? This is me being real. Many, many of my clients have used a Ouija board and they are experiencing uh, percussion, repercussions of using it. So guys, please don't. Please don't use a Ouija board. Just don't. Save yourself the problems and trouble and headache and the traumatic experiences. Where does the paranormal activity fit in in your house? Uh, it's your aunt is involved well, in all this stuff? Well, she didn't, my aunt wasn't in our house, but my mom grew up that way. So I think that's why it was acceptable. In our home and where my mom, uh, she didn't know any better, um, she actually brought a tarot card reader into the house when I was 13. So she's claiming that the tarot card reader brought in spirits into her house. Is that possible? Absolutely. I'm not gonna lie, when I do readings live and I'm doing my tarot card readings, I will get a bunch of spirits behind me trying to communicate to whomever they're with messages. And sometimes that just happens. But so that's why it is important to set up protection and boundaries for yourself so that does not happen like especially for unwanted guests it's different when you're looking for guidance from you know spirit guides benevolent spirit guides and your higher self right it's different you don't want any unwanted guests so it's always wise to take some necessary precautions so that doesn't happen what encouraged you to keep going when accurate information was coming out during those readings. Um, it's not just something that resonates with you, it is something that will be true. Ooh, this one. So she started to get that high sensation of being correct all the time, which made her keep doing the tarot card readings and oracle card readings. Yeah, that can happen and if it does, that is a problem and it's very wise for the person who's doing the reading if they notice that within themselves, right? And they're like, oh my God, I wanna keep doing it, I wanna keep doing it. And maybe take a step back, maybe take a step back. And it also goes for the person seeking the tarot readers, if you become addicted. Some people don't wanna acknowledge that they're addicted to getting tarot card readings. But if you're that person, again, take a step back for a bit because you don't wanna be addicted to getting tarot card readings. Why? addiction in general because let's be real if you have an addictive personality that means you have the ability to be addicted to pretty much anything and when you are in that mindset or vibration you're going to attract things similar to that vibration 
And so let's say you're the person giving the reading, right? If you have that energy, um, not only can you attract negative entities to yourself and your space, you can also get attachments and give those issues to the people you are helping, which then is not helping. <laughs> so you don't wanna do that. And for the person receiving the reading, same thing applies. You know, you're attracting negative things to you. You do not want to do that. Even when you think about the descriptions of the cards, that was being channeled by a psychic. That's automatic writing. So that didn't come from nowhere. That, that's demonic information, the hmm. descriptions of those cards. The demons are in control of this thing. And they're around. And you've already invoked them the second you took out that deck. That's what you've done. Okay, this one, this statement here kind of annoys me. Why? Because as you can see, and if you've watched the entire original video, you kind of see like this pattern of everything's demonic, everything's evil, which I don't want to just generalize and say that's the Christian mentality because not all Christians are like that. We got to be, you know, aware of that fact. But there are a lot, let's be real, there are a lot that have that mindset. And it is fear-mongering, spreading, well, fear-mongering is spreading fear. And sometimes hate, which is not what you want to do, you know. If the whole point, right, is to be a devout follower of God and Jesus, the Lord, right? I'm pretty sure the last thing they would want you to do is produce more negative energy, negative vibrational hoofla with the fear and the hatred because again, those are negative in vibration. You don't wanna be releasing that into the universe. The Lord doesn't want you to do that, right? The Lord wants you to spread love, okay? You can't fight, you know, these things with more hatred and fear. The best way to do it is through love, right? And that is something I practice myself. So, now going into this statement where the person who came up with the card meanings to tarot cards was automatic writing and receiving demonic information. I disagree. I disagree. And again, that is fear mongering. That is spreading fear. And if you don't know what fear mongering is, it's going to be in a card. I already made that video. Go ahead and watch it. But, you know, when someone is automatic writing, okay, can someone receive information from demons and or malevolent spirits during the automatic writing session? Anything is possible, right? Anything is possible and it is not the case 100% of the time, okay? It is so rare to have that happen, to receive information from a demon while automatic writing. It can happen, but like I said, it's rare. The average person who does automatic writing sessions isn't going to connect with a demon. Those who work with demons, Satanists, extremely low vibe people, and those are people with, and I'm not saying people with mental health issues are evil or negative, but if you are in a low vibrational mindset, you have the possibility of attracting malevolent entities. It's true. People with or use or work around black magic or have demonic attachments already or hauntings are going to be the ones that are more likely to attract malicious, malicious, malicious and demonic entities. But that is not the average person. The average person doesn't have that. The person specifically who created the definitions for the cards did not get demonic information. 
okay? I can say that with full confidence. Tarot cards and other divination tools are tools. It is up to the person using them to decide how they are used. Just like a gun. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. Why? Because guns are a tool that people use. I know a lot of people might freak out over this because let's be real, the whole gun thing is a topic that is very controversial. But, you know, with my channel, I do my best to speak the truth or at least my truth. Now, with the exception of Ouija boards. So I'm going to get into the difference between Ouija boards and tarot cards and how they work and whatnot. So tarot cards were created with the intention to help guide others and have been continuously used for that purpose. Ouija boards had a different intention set with more low vibe intentions using it and it it's not the same mechanism. Ouija boards were created in order to talk to the dead for information to either contact loved ones who've passed or to answer questions about, you know, whatever. But the whole point is to talk to the dead. What makes Ouija boards different from tarot cards? Ouija boards are meant to be used with multiple users, whereas tarot cards and oracle cards are meant to be operated by one person. The way in which Ouija boards are used on a spiritual level, the operators cast out a signal for anything to respond to. Typically it's low vibe spirits or entities because it's part of an energetic match. Two, the questions and tensions of those using the board are generally low vibe and ego based. Three, benevolent beings do not and have no need to use a Ouija board to communicate with you because they come and go when they want and relay whatever messages they need to without any restrictions. Those that communicate through the board have restrictions, hence why they use it to communicate. Part of the restriction is energy. The Ouija board users create the signal. The signal is and becomes a direct line to the Ouija board users, making it a portal. The spirit and entity uses the portal to make it to the users and to remain there and or be active, it uses the energy of the operators and feeds off of it. Just because one closes out the board properly doesn't mean the spirit or entity leaves. By communicating with it and or it feeding off of you or the people using the board, it creates an energy cord and can remain in a space and or attached to a person to continue to feed off of them. Now, tarot and or oracle cards are not the same. Those who use them are seeking information from a high vibrational source. What we know today as tarot and used as divination tools within the occult was believed to show up in France around 1780 with the sole purpose of guiding the questioner. However, it is believed other cultures use their own system of cartomancy, you know, which is reading playing cards in fortune telling ways. We know this to be true in places like the Appalachian Mountains or regions in the United States, not to mention similar to tarot, other regions, cultures, and religions have similar methods that include reading bones, trinkets, runes, etc. Essentially, the purpose is to use your intuition with the help of your guides and use your energy to help you select cards relevant to you or the person you are reading for. They are intended to help the questioner understand their current situation, their past, and how that may interact with the path they are going down and what challenges may occur along the way, aka understanding the present and past to predict possible future outcomes. They will not tell you exactly what will happen no matter how bad a person wants exact information due to the fact that people have free will and can change their minds on a dime. A lot of people do not understand that. Of course, you know, tarot cards have been marketed to tell the future, but 
again, free will. People can change their mind on a dime. So with that being said, it's important to understand that they can't exactly predict the future, but they can give you possible outcomes that may or may not happen. The cards have structure built within them and isn't quite as open-ended like the Ouija board. They are great for validation and a push in the correct or possible directions a person can go. Typically, an outside source isn't required, whereas a Ouija board has that necessity. So again, tarot cards are using your energy. You know, if they're being used traditionally, they're using the user's energy to help, you know, pick out the cards, whereas a Ouija board, you're looking purposely to an outside source, specifically a dead person, to answer your questions. That's why it's different. For mediums who use the cards, everything that was just said applies. However, they have access to more information due to the fact that they can talk to the deceased and other beings. Depending on several variables will depend on how other beings or spirits will interact in a reading. The roles they play in how information is expressed. So here are some variables. Boundaries and protections that are being set up. Intentions, so what you want out of the reading or source of information. And then you have hauntings, attachments, the reader's vibration, card cleansings, space cleansings, the person being read for, and if they have loved ones around to get out messages. And these are just a few variables. I'm sure there's a few I missed. So spirits around the reader can influence the cards that are chosen and or relay more specific or detailed information from the cards. I personally like to burn my white candle. I'll have my Palo Santo burning as well to make sure the energy is good. I will also have made sure to cleanse my space before and after giving these readings because I don't want anything influencing while I'm doing the reading and then I don't want anything lingering afterwards. So that's why I do what I do. And it's also a way to protect myself from negative entities that might want to try to sabotage, whether it's from my end, the, the person I'm reading for end, or just because they just want to, you know, mess with me because they think it's fun. But, yeah. I also let my guides pop my cards out, though I'm going to be honest. <laughs> my, my guides have been like, yo, while, you know, it's fine that we do it this way, we prefer that you use your um, clairaudience and claircognizance and other clairabilities and stop being lazy and letting us pick it. Which, okay, I get it. One thing I did notice while doing tarot readings for people in general, it can attract good and bad spirits. Because again, for me, when I do my cards, I don't always go based off of the definitions of the cards. I will also channel simultaneously and let, you know, the images spur visions and or information and or you know let my guides or higher self like be like hey here's a specific situation get throw in there because let's be real tarot cards they have a specific structure that can only give you so much information but as a medium i can add on top which you know you if you pay attention to my channel and some of my lives, you'll see that I get specific sometimes. But like I said, because I'm an open channel then, you can get anything and everything that can interfere. Because, again, it's like they see that opportunity and sometimes they'll try to take it. But that's why it's good to understand discernment and know when you get some negative things trying to, you know, mess with you. I just drooled. <laughs> oh, God damn it. You didn't see that. Now, when you have people that are desperate, again, desperation, even though it is a normal human emotion, just like fear and anger, is still low vibrational. So when you have people that are desperate 
for readings or connecting, it can attract negative entities to the person and or the reading, which can interfere with the reading and you don't want to do that. Which again, it's hard. It's easier for me to say it versus actually practicing those things. And if you're not someone who's very self-aware, you know, you could have issues. I'm a type of person who's very self-aware just because of my schooling, all the meditations I've done, and some other things. But yeah, it's important to be very self-aware. But yeah, negative entities, when they jack the readings, can, you know, harass the person being read for and maybe impose some fear on their target, which again, you don't want to do. You don't want to do it. And that's kind of what happened to her, as you'll see more in the video, if and when you watch the full thing. So again, that's why it's important to set boundaries and protection so nothing negative can come through. This is where potential paranormal activity may enter and remain in a space. For me, I'll have my protection set up and again, like I said, sometimes I'll go to my neighbor's side and wait until my protection stuff fades. Because let's be real, I don't always, you know, track my protection and mark it down on a calendar and remind myself, okay, on this day I got to do it again. And then on this day, no, I'll forget. And they notice that. And then they'll come in and then they'll have problems. And the problems are not the, they're not fun. But yeah, they'll swarm my ass. The majority of the time, the medium isn't communicating with a demon. So, you know, she likes to throw the word demon and demonic out. Most of the time, mediums are not communicating with demons. And a lot of them only work in the light. So that won't even be a problem for them anyway. Because, you know, I am somebody who helps people and try to bring people out of the dark it is always a possibility however i make pretty damn sure that doesn't happen but you also have the potential of having a very inexperienced medium who is just an open channel to everything and doesn't try to filter out things not to be rude but M from Metapsychics kind of operates in that way. And I'm not throwing shade. Like, she does whatever she does, how she does it, you know? I'm not saying that she doesn't protect herself, but I noticed that she kind of is open to everything. And I don't know because I haven't analyzed. So, again, don't come for anybody she doesn't have much of a filter like Liv does. Liv is very, she has her way of creating her boundaries and filters and I like it. I like it a lot. But M, she worries me. I'm not gonna lie. She worries me with the things that she sees and comes through. Now granted, I see a whole host of shit. However, I do have that barrier between myself and that. Whatever negative shit may come because I don't want to get my ass kicked. Now I wanted to include a little bit of automatic writing, but that's using your intuition and information given to you by guides or anything around and writing it down on paper without thinking, just writing, can be influenced by entities and spirits around, which is important to set boundaries and protection again. So just keep that in mind. Now since the video is so long already, this is going to be my last like comment criticism thingy whatever you want to call it so i wasn't scared until i started seeing scary things and hearing scary things and getting touched by demons i think it is important to state that for anybody who's trying to become a medium or enhance their skills it is important to understand that there are evil things and benevolent things. And as a medium, you're gonna see both. If you don't see both, damn, you lucky. But a lot of the times, 
you're going to start seeing both things, both sides of the spectrum until you kind of gain your, your groove, if you want to call it that. But so things she perceived as demons, which weren't demons, her fear and lack of understanding of those spirits and entities weaponized and demonized those that, you know, she was encountering, thereby giving them more power against her. Being fearful is, again, low vibrational and puts out negative energy. That's not saying that the person is bad because fear is a negative human emotion produced by the brain in order to keep a person safe because it initiates the fight or flight reaction to protect itself. It is the act of and the emotion itself that is low vibe and negative in energy. Negative entities feed off that energy and or use it against you to perpetuate the feeding cycle. So, again, it's important not to, you know, be afraid. Again, easier said than done. And I'm going to be honest, it took me probably, I don't know, a year, a year to not become afraid. Why? Because I got desensitized. (laughs) Shit happens, you know? And because I had a haunting that was traumatic and bad things kept happening and happening and happening, I eventually was like, fuck this, I ain't taking yo shit no more. And, you know, I did as much research. I learned how to fight on the astral realm and not take shit from evil things anymore. And you kind of have to have like a fuck it attitude in order to do this kind of work and or to just not be afraid of the negative things that you see. And uh, that was me. I got annoyed. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm done. You want to fight? Let's go. Like, I ain't afraid of you anymore. And that's what you got to do. She did not have that. And it scared the bejesus out of her. And because it scared the crap out of her, now she has this fear mindset and now is spreading fear to other people by spewing the stuff that she's spewing in this um, interview. Not everything is a demon. There are more entities out there than one can fathom. And they're not all demons. You have classes of entities that even I don't even know. Even more famous and more experienced mediums who've been doing it for 40, 50 years don't know about, right? Because we're humans. We kind of have a limit on what we can process and understand and whatnot. So obviously you have your earthbound spirits, you have your human spirits that have crossed over. You have demons, of course. You have entities that work with demons that are not demons, but are more on the familiar side. And there are many different types of familiars because you have familiars that work with witches, good and bad witches familiars that work with demons, familiars that work with other entities that, again, range in the spectrum. You have bug entities. For every organism in our earth, you have the equivalent in spirit form. And if we don't know all that exists on earth because, you know, let's be real, scientists kind of gave up and are now in space looking for shit, you know, everything has the equivalent on the spiritual. Tis at least my truth, and maybe some of you can agree with me. You have angels. You have archangels. You have those angel things with the wings and the bajillion eyes. You have, oh, shrooms. When you do shrooms and you get high on that stuff, there are specific entities associated with that. And I can't even list anymore. You have Thought forms. I lied. I can I can list quite a few. There are thought forms. There are under thought forms. Because remember, that's kind of just like a vague term. You got poltergeist. You got tulpas. You have... Fuck. <laughs> I was on a roll. What else? Fuck. Oh, you have fey. You have elementals. You have other things under the fey category. You have wood nymphs. You have dryads. You have um, 
what the fuck are the turtle looking things? Oh my god, I can't. There are other videos. But you get, you get my point, okay? There are so many things. And I learned a lot of this probably <laughs> uh, within this last year. There's a lot of shit I learned. But again, that doesn't even brush the surface. Yeah. I don't even think the amount of entities and the diversity of entities can be even quantified because, again, you have other planets. You have other realms. So it's not just all demons. Demons are just a little piece of the pie. I will say, because of her fear, she did attract some negative things. She also didn't have proper protection and boundaries set. Okay, <laughs> I think, yeah. So there was a lot of stuff she did not do to protect herself. And I'm gonna be honest, there are some things that I'm still learning about protecting myself. And I always try to relay everything that I learned to you guys. So, you know, you don't, and you are not put into a crappy situation. Because let's be real, that sucks. The whole point, my channel is to raise the vibration of everybody and I'm going to cut this video here. We are going to go with a part two because let's see how many pages of notes I have. One, two, three, four, five. I still have five pages of notes to get through. Thank you guys so much for watching as much as you have. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment any questions, thoughts, or concerns down below. And, uh, I will see you shortly. Next week? I don't know. I might put out another video, um... The fuck? I'm gonna say... I'm gonna try to put out part two on Sunday. How's that sound, right? Right before Christmas. So, yeah. Peace out, home slices, and homes of other varieties. <laughs>